and this longevity is completely dependent on uh, this prescription factor density being positive. So the question we asked is whether uh, ER homeostasis is improved in insulin RGF1 And the way we wanted to address this question was by looking at the ER stress response. So the ER stress response is a natural um, built-in response in the cells in which the cell constantly um, um, senses the level of misfolded proteins that accumulate within the ER. Once misfolded proteins accumulate in the ER, they activate these sensors which then trigger um, um, signaling pathways aimed to restoring ER homeostasis. So we have three different proteins in the ER membrane which can bind to misfolded proteins and in response activate uh, signaling pathways. And the, the more misfolded proteins we have in the ER, the more activation can, that we can see of these pathways. So if we have a str um, bad ER homeostasis, then we expect to see high activation of these proteins. And we can follow that molecularly. For example, IRE1 is a ribonucleus. So when it's activated, we can um, um, follow the splicing of its downstream target gene, XBP1. So when we have um, high levels of ER stress, um, IRE1 is activated, and we can detect high levels of splicing of XBP1. AFF6 is a transcription factor. When we have high levels of ER stress, AFF6 uh, it gets processed in the Golgi and then translocates into the nucleus. And FEC1 is an EIF2 alpha kinase. When it's activated in the presence of misfolded proteins, it can phosphorylate EIF2 alpha to slow down translation initiation, so we can follow EIF2 alpha phosphorylation as a marker for ER stress. So what we did is we followed uh, markers of two of these pathways, the IRA1 pathway and the PAC1 pathway, and compared the level of activation of the ER stress response in wild-type animals and in animals that produce insulin IGF1 signal. <coughs> So if you focus here on the IRE1 pathway, um, activation of the IRE1 pathway by um, misfolded proteins in the ER increases the uh, splicing of XBP1. So here the top band is unspliced XBP1, and the bottom band is spliced XBP1. And we can detect a low level of splicing of XBP1 in wild-type animals. So we always have some minimal amount of ER stress, which activates IRE1 to some extent, and this leads to some splicing of XBP1. However, in that two animals, we hardly detect any splicing of XBP1, suggesting that there, are, there is less misfolded proteins in the AR of DAF2 mutants. We see a similar result when we follow the phosphorylation of the H2-alpha as a marker for activation of PEC1. As you can see in wild type uh, animals, we have a basal level of the H2-alpha phosphorylation and a much lower level of the H2-alpha phosphorylation in DAF2 mutants. So this data is consistent with the idea that animals who produce insulin IGF-1 signaling have better ER homeostasis, and, or in other words, less misfolded proteins in their ER. Not only is the ER stress response less active um, in these mutants, they are also more resistant to ER stress. So if you take animals from, uh, um, eggs from wild-type animals, or eggs from animals who produce insulin IGF-1 signaling, and we challenge them to develop in the presence of tunicomycin, which is a chemical inducer of ER stress, Wild-type animals uh, don't do that very effectively. We would lay down 100 eggs of wild-type animals, only approximately 20 of them will develop into adults. However, DAF2 animals who produce insulin IGF-1 signaling, they develop very well, even in the presence of tunicomycin. So animals who produce insulin IGF-1 signaling have um, less misfolded proteins in the ER, and when you challenge them with an ER stressor, they can handle it much better. <coughs> So um, how might uh, reduced insulin IGF-1 signaling improve ER homeostasis and ER stress resistance? And we thought of two, uh, two possible uh, mechanisms. Obviously, additional possibilities are out there, but these are the two simplest explanations. The first is that uh, somehow insulin IGF-1 signaling can use the normal ER stress response, response that is already present in the cell in order to maintain uh, improved ER homeostasis. Because these proteins who constantly sense misfolded proteins in the AR and know how to reduce the load on the AR, that's what they know to do. They know how to restore the ER homeostasis. And the other possibility uh, is that whatever DAF2 is doing is mediated through its downstream prescription factor DAF16. And this is a very likely possibility because all of the phenotypes associated with um, reduced insulin IG of one signaling are dependent on this transcription. So we started out um, uh, checking out this first model, asking, is this the ear stress resistance of uh, animals who produce
produce insulin IG1 signaling dependent on these genes that constitute the a classical ER stress response. So um, 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 as you can see here, we have three uh, ER stress response genes, IR1, ATF6, and PEC1. And I've already shown you that um, animals, uh, that DAC2 mutants can uh, develop very well in the presence of tunicomycin. When we take away ATF6, DAF2 mutants can still develop very well in the presence of tunicomycin. And when we take away PEC1, DAF2 mutants can still develop very well in the presence of tunicomycin. The problem starts when we take away um, genes from this pathway, when we inactivate IRE1 or its downstream target XBP1. And we challenge the animals with high levels of tunicomycin, then we see that the enhanced resistance of um, insulin IGF1 mutants appears to be lost. So when we first saw this, we thought, okay, so the um, way um, DAF2 mutants become resistant to ER stress is mediated and dependent on IRA1 and XBP1. However, when we uh, repeated this experiment more carefully and we tighter down the level of ER stress to which we uh, exposed the animal, then we saw a different picture. If we tighter down the level of ER stress to a level, to a level in which uh, wildlife animals can handle it well, but animals with a defective UPR, which lack IRA1 or XBP1 are sensitive to, and now we reduce insulin IGF1 signaling, we can still improve their resistance to ER stress. So this told us that um, um, reducing insulin IGF1 signaling can improve ER stress resistance and ER homeostasis independently of IRA1 and XBP1 as well. So this um, um, suggests that um, animals with reduced insulin IGF1 signaling have an alternative pathway that by bypasses the canonical UPR to improve the ER male stasis. Um, this is just another indication uh, that supports the fact that insulin and IGF-1 signaling uh, can bypass the canonical um, UPR. What we are looking at here is uh, DAF28 GFP fusion protein. DAF28 GFP is the treated protein. It's actually one of the worm insulins. And you can see that um, in wildlife animals, this insulin is secreted from the cells that produce it that are marked here by this arrow. And we can find the insulin spreading out um, in the whole body cavity of the animal. If I look at IRE1 mutants, which are animals that are actually under ER stress because they can't maintain ER homeostasis, you can see that the insulin is not secreted because their ER is defective and stressed, and it accumulates in the producing cells. However, if I reduce insulin IGF-1 signaling in these animals, I can make the ER functional again and protein secretion is restored. <clears throat> so it seems that uh, reducing insulin IGF-1 signaling can improve ER homeostasis and function independently of the UPR. And therefore we, look at, uh, we went on and looked at our uh, secondary um, uh, model, and that is that this improved ER stress resistance and homeostasis might be mediated by DAF-16. And, um, and indeed, if we look at the tunicomycin resistance assays, we see that whereas DAF2 animals are very resistant to the ER stress um, when exposed to tunicomycin, when we take away DAF16, they're more sensitive. And if we look at the level of activation of the ER stress response, here we're looking at an ER stress reporter, we see that whereas the level of this ER stress reporter is low in DAF2 mutants, um, in DAF2, uh, um, DAF16 double mutants, um, we see activation of the ER stress response. So we lose all the benefits of animals with reduced insulin IGF-1 signaling once we take away that. Um, we see the same effect also when we looked at the, uh, at the functional assay at the secretion of the DAF28 insulin, whereas um, 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 a mutation in, in DAF2 restored um, insulin secretion um, in IRE1 mutants. If you take away DAF16, secretion, uh, the, the proper secretion is blocked once again. And if you force uh, DAF-16 in, into the nucleus of these animals, independently of insulin IGF-1 signaling, you can restore DAF um, the insulin secretion. So all you need in order to improve uh, ER function is to uh, introduce DAF-16 into the nucleus, and then the, the ER homeostasis and function is better. So um, GAF-16, as I mentioned earlier, is a transcription factor and um, it transcribes genes. So most likely one of its target genes is responsible for improving ER homeostasis. And we wondered what of its, which one of its downstream genes might it be. So uh, we did a simple uh, small scale genetic screen in which we took animals in which, which lack IRE1, so they don't have a functional UPR, they have actually a stressed UPR and would normally not secrete 
and we introduced dacistine into the nuclei into the nuclei of these animals, either by expressing directly nuclear dacistine or by reducing insulin IJ4 signaling. And then we took these animals and we treated it, them with RNAi against uh, known target genes of DAS16. And we looked for uh, RNAi clones that uh, made these animals look once again like IRE1. So we were asking what genes are required for the improved secretion and improved uh, function of ER in IRE1 mutants. And um, after screening approximately 400 R uh, DAS16 target genes, we came up with a small set of RNAi clones that made these worms look like this. And um, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus on uh, this gene, SKR5, which we characterize in further depth. So uh, once again, we started out with animals which uh, have a dysfunctional U uh, UPR because they like IRE1, they, their ER would normally be dysfunctional. And we reduced insulin IJ1 signaling, so we restored ER function, as you can see, these animals are secreting the insulin. And now we treated these animals with SKR5 RNAi, and uh, the uh, improvement is lost, um, suggesting that SKR5 is required for improving secretion uh, and ER function in these animals. We uh, quantitated uh, the fluorescence, the levels of, the DAF, of this DAF28 uh, G3 protein in these animals in two ways. We quantitated the fluorescence, and uh, we found that the overall fluorescence of this animal and this animal, of course I'm talking about sets of uh, 10, uh, 50 animals or so from each genotype, did not significantly change. So um, um, the overall fluorescence um, is not changed when we treat with SKR5 RNAi. However, if we perform a Western blot against the same protein that we measure its fluorescence here, we can see that when we activate SKR5, we see a, a big increase in the level the, to the total levels of the proteins. This means that some of this protein that we see here by Western blot does not contribute to the fluorescence. This suggests that some of the protein that accumulates here when we inactivate SKR5 is actually misfolded and cannot fluoresce. So this supports um, um, the idea that SKR5 is required for the degradation of misfolded proteins in these animals. And this actually fits with um, the molecular identity of SKR5 which um, is a component of an E3 ubiquitin ligase. Okay, so um, what might SKR5 be doing? Um, there is known, um, a known role for um, um, uh, pro uh, proteasome and E3 ligases in um, the ER stress response. Um, um, the ER constantly um, produces proteins, and proteins that are misfolded are detected and are degraded via ERA, ER-associated degradation. So they are detected as this in the ER, they are transported out of the ER, um, and, 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 and are um, tagged by ubiquitin by um, E3 ubiquitin ligases, and then they are degraded by the proteasome. So uh, we, talk, we wondered whether SKR5 may be an alternative ERA pathway that, takes, uh, that degrades proteins from the ER, and which cannot be degraded in IRE1, because perhaps because the canonical uh, the ERA pathway is dysfunctional in uh, IR1 mutants. So uh, in order to, t to see whether SKR5 is functionally redundant, redundant with the known ER ERA associated E3 ligases, we, uh, we performed uh, this uh, synthetic uh, sens sens sensitivity assay. As you can see, wild type animals um, develop fine. SKR5 mutants develop fine. Animals in which we can activate HRD1, which is the, e the ERA associated E3 like is developed fine, but when we create a double mutant which lacks SKR5 and HRD1, then we have synthetic arrest, suggesting that HRD1 and SKR5 might have redundant functions. Um, to look at this, um, so the idea is that if um, um, HRD1 and SKR5 have redundant functions, um, um, to clear misfolded proteins uh, from the ER, then perhaps activation of SKR5 in DAF2 mutants provides an alternative for the canonical ERAD um, in wild type animals. Um, to uh, see whether indeed uh, there is an alternative ERAD system in uh, DAF2 mutants, we turn to a more classical model to follow uh, misfolded proteins in the ER. And we use, uh, uh, for this purpose, these forms that express um, a lysosomal protein, CPL1, uh, which has a mutation which is known to cause its misfolding. 
And this protein is once again tagged with YFP. And in this case, this protein is normally uh, detected by the ERAT system and therefore degraded by the proteasome. But if we activate IRA1, then the ERAT system is not functioning pro properly. This protein accumulates and it, we can detect it by fluorescence. So um, in animals with a dysfunctional um, ERAD or with a dysfunctional IRA1, CPL1, mutated CPL1 accumulates at fluorescence. However, if we inactivate uh, insulin like GF1 signaling, we find a way to remove it. And we can remove, uh, prevent the accumulation of um, CPL1 in HRD1 mutants if we reduce insulin IGF1 signaling and insulin 1 mutants. So these are all ERAD components. Um, however, we cannot remove um, uh, we cannot prevent CPL1 accumulation um, when we inactivate item 1, which is the protein which first recognizes the protein in this folded. So we need item 1 to recognize this folded proteins, but then in that 2 mutants we have an alternative mechanism to remove, to remove them. We wondered what this mechanism be, might be, and we thought that perhaps um, it's, it's literally an alternative to the canonical ERAD, and it sends the, pro the misfolded proteins once again to the proteasome. So to test this, we treated the animal with um, a proteasome inhibitor. And in wildlife animals, when we treat the animals with the proteasome inhibitor, we see as expected the accumulation of the CPL1 protein. But in NAF2 animals, if you treat them with the proteasome inhibitors, the protein is still effectively removed. So you wondered um, how else uh, the protein uh, is removed, if not via the proteasome. And then we thought that perhaps it's through uh, phagosome mediated degradation. So uh, we introduced a mutation which interferes with phagosome formation into DAF2 mutants. And this too did not affect uh, the clearance of this um, 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 mutated proteins. However, when we combined a mutation in phagosome uh, formation with um, an activation of the canonical ERAD, then we could see accumulation of, uh, of the misfolded protein. This suggests that in wild type animals, we have only one way to get rid of misfolded proteins, and that is via uh, the proteasome. However, in DAF2 animals, uh, we produce insulin IGF1 signal, we have two ways to get rid of the proteins. We can get rid of them either by the canonical ERAD, or we can get uh, rid of them through uh, phagosome formation. Um, and if, if you have only one of the two, the animals are still fine, and they get rid of misfolded proteins allowing the ER to maintain homeostasis and be functional. But if you block both pathways, then you're back, that, that could be um, a stress ER. So in summary, I've shown you that reducing insulin IGF-1 signal improves ER homeostasis, and it does so independently of IV-1. I've shown you that uh, this increased, uh, ER, improved ER homeostasis mediated by specific DAF-16 target genes, and specifically, I talked about SKR5, and I've shown you that um, SKR5 promotes uh, the clearance of this folded protein from the ER, uh, not by um, ERAD, which uh, um, transfers the proteins to the proteasome, but rather by uh, a phagosome formation. Um, I'd like to thank all the members of my lab, and especially Moni Stafwa. So increase of autophagy function was also shown in dietary restriction, was also shown in germline proliferation even. So did you look at the IRE function and the ER function in, the, in, the, in this background? And not yet. I only looked at um, dietary restricted animals, which are actually more sensitive to the to more sensitive. Like to the, to the wildlife animals. So. 
but I would guess that at least the reproductive pathway mutants for that 16 and then the nucleus will have the same benefits. Thank you very much.